Let's have a look now at the situation on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, Barak Sina, founder uh, of Strategic Intelligentia and associate fellow uh, at the think tank Rusi is here with me now. Well, very good uh, afternoon to you. So, you. Uh, first of all, we've got a, a picture of all of Ukraine at the moment. Just sum up for us the changes that have gone on uh, in the last week, uh, leaving us uh, with the situation we're in now. The Russians have completely abandoned the north. They were once very focused on capturing Kiev. They've abandoned it. Um, they've had a lot of troop casualties. Um, about 20% of their troops and military hardware has been destroyed. Um, they are now deciding to go via Belgrod outside of the country to target the east and the south of the country. So by doing that, um, they have a much more densely populated area to focus on. They have not, they're not positioned in four different places, but they're going to be positioned in one concentrated area. Um, and they have as well half of the travel time to reach their locations than the Ukrainians do. Um, they have just an easier supply route. Mm -hmm. um, because the Ukrainians, has to, they have to receive their military hardware from Poland to Kiev and then to the Donbass region, um, which is quite some way away, and they don't necessarily have the effective equipment that mm -hmm. they require as of yet. Um, the mm -hmm. aim here, however, is to go from Kharkiv, Mariupol, Kherson, to cut off... Let's dive into that region as well. Keep going, keep going. To cut off... Um, Odessa and Crimea, the seaports, from being able to export their produce, mm -hmm. um, their energy, their um, wheat, um, their sunflower oil, um, something that really is going to create a humanitarian food crisis in Africa and the Middle East. So what Putin is really doing now, in a sense, is a scorched earth policy, mm -hmm. scorched earth strategy. Um, it has no strategic value to Russia. Um, however, this is just simply done to inflict pain mm -hmm. on Ukraine. I interesting. So even if they manage to connect this area up, that's not for strategic gains to Russia? No, it, it feeds into Putin's narrative of empire, Slavic people, Russian-speaking people, um, of which uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, mm -hmm. the two self-proclaimed republics, feed into that narrative. And um, if, he's managed, if he manages to create a win over here, then he has at least something to proclaim in his May victory speech. This is done not for strategic gain, but for domestic legitimacy. Let's uh, have a look now at uh, the, the idea of humanitarian corridors. Uh, we've d heard them... Uh, be discussed, supposedly start to be established, particularly to help people out of areas like Mariupol, which have been under attack. Talk, talk us through whether we really believe that these are significantly established. These are humanitarian zones that have been um, established is really to create corridors that people can go from these different areas to Bakhmut and Zaporizhia. The problem with these human corridors are that ultimately they still are very close to the conflict zones. They are still in the Donbass region. Historically, Russia isn't known to really keeping up, abiding by its word mm -hmm. um, and maintaining um, humanitarian zones. We have to remember historically that Srebrenica in the 1990s was a humanitarian zone, mm -hmm. and yet thousands of Muslim men and boys were massacred there. Um, in the Syrian civil war, um, the Russians went in and they even instigated a humanitarian crisis. They prevented food from reaching the populations in order to create infighting amongst the populations. Mm -hmm. Now. A regime, the Putin regime, that is willing to incur crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. um, we can't really trust them to really abide by sort of a humanitarian protection civilian strategy. 
And these only work in part of a broader framework of a civilian protection strategy where you have the free delivery of food, of humanitarian supplies, not only mm -hmm. the, escape, the escape of civilians to these areas. And bear in mind, these areas are still in the Donbass region. They are not mm -hmm. way out. So this is not part of an overarching strategy to protect civilians. It's just a very short-term, ad hoc response to prevent greater genocide from occurring. OK, Barack, for now, thanks so much. Thank you.